this is Ryan Quigley, the Director of Admissions at Joliet Catholic Academy, uh, and I'm here with our guest of the night, uh, Mr. Tom Thayer. Tom, first off, thank you for coming. Um, what's one of your favorite moments that you can think of just about the Joliet Catholic community in general? The, it's family. You know, that's the one thing about Joliet Catholic, and it kind of is, I, that's why I always appreciated Notre Dame and the Bears, because it's all similar. It's all about family. When I think about the people I've already seen here tonight, like Pat Mudron, for example, you know, he's influenced me my whole life, because when I was a kid going to Joliet Catholic, they used to have a picture up in the gym of the only state champion wrestler in the history of Joliet Catholic, and now I think where the wrestling program has become and where it's at right now. If people didn't care about the school they came from, they wouldn't continue to follow what their school is going through. So I think that's the great thing about Joliet and Joliet Catholic and the family atmosphere it has here. Um, I, I coach freshman football here at Joliet Catholic, and Tom's brother Rick has coached with me the last several years, and I know we always appreciate the fact that Tom's come out and talked to our boys, and uh, you just talked about family, but whether it's Tom, Kobe Fleener, um, Scully, all these guys that come back and give back. Uh, maybe talk about that a little bit, about how that kind of just reciprocates itself. You know, that's the reason they do come back, is because from the trail of people that are be that come behind you at Jolie Catholic, they're not only inspirational, they're quality people, they have great character, and they're super successful, whether they do well in football here or what they do going on forward. And I think that's always the unique thing about Jolie Catholic. And, you know, for me, you talk about the freshman football game. So I go to the stadium this year, do a couple games, and I bring my third generation nephew out there. And now he's my great nephew, but I'm bringing him out to the games to watch you guys play. And I get as excited about that as I do broadcasting a Bears game on Sunday. Being that we're celebrating 100 years of Hilltopper football tonight and 14 state championships, uh, what is your favorite Hilltopper football memory over the last 100 years? You know, when I was a little kid, I met Gordy Gillespie, and he used to be a family friend. And for me, the tradition of driving towards Memorial Stadium and seeing those lights on on a Friday night, it inspired you as a kid. My favorite moments, obviously, are the teams that I got to play on and win state championships and hoist in that trophy because of what they did before you and what you hope they're going to do after you. And so, yeah, that was the, that was the greatest moments. But like I said, the growing into Jolie Catholic has been a part of my life since I've been a little kid and since I saw this, the lights at Memorial Stadium. Um. How about a, a Bears prediction for the 2020 season? What are, what are the Bears going to look like? I know some people were disappointed this year, but still made a run at the end and kind of competed there at the end and saw some good things from Trubisky. And what, what do you think the Bears prospects look like in 2020? You know, that's the key is Mitchell Trubisky. He's the guy that has to develop to that next level. But like Joliet Catholic, and I sit there and I tell the Bears players all the time, if you don't run the ball successfully, you're not going to win. And that's what Joliet Catholic does so well. And so, yeah, you're going to have to have a running game that supports Trubisky. But I do still have a lot of faith in Trubisky's going to be the quarterback that he was drafted to be. He's a hardworking guy. He's incredibly de dedicated. So I see a lot of good things coming because of him. Uh, with the exception of being on stage with Mark Grant tonight, uh, what is going to be the thing that you're anticipating or looking forward to the most tonight uh, at this Hilltopper Banquet? You know, I've already seen guys that I haven't seen some, since high school. I've already seen a lot of friends down there that I'm excited to see. But for, for me, you know, we're sitting here talking about Mike Allstott also. You know, my, I remember seeing Mike Allstott play in the Pop Warner because he's the same age as my nephew. But then I broadcasted every one of Mike Allstott's games he's ever played against the Chicago Bears. So I was proud of the reputation that he presented to the Bears players because they always asked me about him. But those are the roots of Joe A. Catholic. Because Mike Allstott, you know, that position, you know, even, even when my brother was a player here, it was such a, you know, the fullback position, the running game was so important to the Bears, to the success. So it's kind of neat for me to be able to brag about Allstott in front of Chicago Bears players when we were getting ready to play those guys. Right. That's awesome. Um, just one last question. Growing up as a kid in Joliet and loving Joliet Catholic football, one of the things that always kind of took me back was stories about Tom Thayer, stories about Mike Allstott. It never was that you guys were incredibly physically talented. It was always Tom Thayer was the strongest guy on the line on the Bears. Mike Allstott was the hardest worker and the guy that pushed cars in the parking lot here. And so for a kid being a Hilltopper, we felt like we could do anything if we just worked hard enough. We might not be talented enough to get there. Can you talk a little bit about that Joliet Catholic work ethic? 
I was really fortunate to meet Francis Rudiger. When I was a young guy, I met Francis and he kind of taught me the importance of serious weightlifting and how it would help you be successful going forward. And so when I met him, he took it to a whole nother level. The dedication, I wanted to be a great football player. I wanted to follow in the footsteps of my brother, but also becoming a part of the Joliet, what, weightlift, Joliet weightlifting community. And it was um, probably the most important thing that ever allowed me to continue to follow the path of football. And a lot of it has to do because of Rudy. I, I lied, I have one last question, right. okay? So Coach Rick there with our freshmen, he tells a story every year to the boys that Tom wanted to be a running back as a freshman and was gonna quit football because they weren't gonna let him be a running back. Yes. True, true or false? 100% true. And I remember walking towards the gate and my dad was standing there to pick us up after practice. And I said, Dad, they're gonna turn me to an offensive tackle. I'm gonna quit football. And he says, no, you're not. Get back there. And it was probably, obviously, the best decision ever made for my future. So it's a great story for all you parents out there. Listen to your coaches. They know what they're doing. You might yes. be the, becoming the next Tom there. So thank you very much, Tom. You're welcome. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm here with Mike Allstott. Um, we're celebrating 100 years of Joya Catholic football tonight at our annual Hilltopper and Angel Alumni Banquet. So in that vein, Mike, what's your favorite memory from 100 years of Hilltopper football? You know, ever since uh, the day when I was running around as a, you know, probably fifth, sixth, seventh grader or whatever, just playing in the Sandlot football during Joliet Catholic games and always knew I was going to come here and, and, and be a part of uh, the tradition and stuff like that. And then when we got here, it was it was the brotherhood. It was the guys. We always didn't have the greatest talent, but when we came together, the tradition and everything that we represented, it, we won a state championship. You know, I think I went uh, 20, 26, 27 and one in my career here uh, with the other brothers I played with, my teammates, and just the legacy that you know that we lived on through the the, the, the guys that built it before us and, and what it's going on now it's 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 unbelievable from from year to year year how, how great we are uh, as a young kid in the community growing up I used to hear stories and about your work ethic and pushing cars and your uncle Schmitty used to take me to Notre Dame football games when Purdue and Notre Dame were playing each other so as a kid we always felt like we could do anything if we worked hard enough if we worked the way Mike Allstott did uh, where did you where did you get that work ethic where did you find that um, just a dream. You know, I just wanted to become seriously. I wanted to become a NFL football player, you know, and I wanted to go to Joliet Catholic. That was the first road to becoming that, and I wanted to be part of, obviously, this tradition and be a great running back, and and then go on to division, uh, one football, and then and, and live my dream. It was just uh, I didn't have the great talent. Um, you know, not the best talent in the world. I knew it was going to come with my work ethic and whatever I could possibly do to help myself uh, be better than my opponents. I, I did everything possible. Um, with with Tom Thayer and Mike Allstott being here tonight, we're blessed to have two former alums, but also two Super Bowl champions. Um, and with your time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, having the opportunity to win a Super Bowl, what was that like? Unbelievable, unbelievable. It's kind of like the same thing that I experienced here. I experienced at the Bucks. Um, the locker room is everything I remember and everything that we worked for. And uh, we were so close for a lot of, a lot of years in my uh, first five years. And then, you know, we just, you know, made it happen in, in, in my sixth year, being my seventh year winning the Super Bowl. And uh, it was just, um, again, a lot of hard work, a lot of great, a lot of great people, a lot of great teammates, a lot of great friends, and, uh, you know, and a lot of failure and a lot of ups and downs. So it's just uh, a situation of how hard we're going to work together to get the job done. Yeah. Um, I, I get this question all the time from people. They always ask, what's Mike Allstott doing now? And obviously, I know what you're doing um, just from John Horn and your coaching career. But kind of to let our general public know, what, what are you up to these days? I'm a high school head coach. Um, I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. And uh, I've been coaching. I've been a head coach for uh, Northside Christian for the last uh, eight years. And I started a year before my son went to high school. And uh, I'm still continuing it. It's, it's, uh, it's my passion. It's my love. It's everything. I'm involved in football. I'm involved in helping kids uh, achieve their dreams and um, help them achieve their dreams and, and, and teach them what hard work, what pays off. Um, I know a couple years ago, John Horn had brought you back and he was taking you on a tour throughout the building. And when I was a little kid, when I was when I was eight, my dad gave me my first Carmelite scapular. And I noticed you're wearing one tonight. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the Carmelites and uh, you know what that means to you um, here at JCA. Uh, this is this. Uh, this is the, the same cloth from here. So the string is broke. I've replaced the broke with the same cloth. And uh, 
ever since I was anointed as uh, when we were at uh, Jolie Catholic High School, when we were all got well, the all guys school after initiation week, you know, our big brothers would, you know, anoint us with the with the scapular, and um, we all rolled it up and. I've rolled it up, and it's been on my neck ever since. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So we want to thank you again for coming tonight. It means a lot to our whole school community and all the fans out there, and thanks a lot, Mike. No, I appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Um, I'm here with Mark Grant. He's our master of ceremonies tonight here at the 100th uh, celebration of Hilltopper football. Hi, um, Rhino. Good to see you, Mark. Good to yeah. see you as always. My first question is, what's it going to be like tonight being the least talented person on the stage? That's a great quote. In fact, you know what? He's correct. I'm gonna oh, and Tommy's interrupting, which is great. See, this oh. is, you want to talk about you, family. This is what you've been, my dad's yes. been looking for. I know. Oh, my gosh. You've got to show the camera. Well, yeah. you got to show the people that so, are going to come here. This is, was at TNT's. Yes. When, when Tommy and Mike Tomczak had the restaurant on Fairlane Drive, which I grew up on, my mom and dad still live there, I donated some stuff for the restaurant. And my parents put together this collage and they've been asking, and I'm not exaggerating, they've been asking about this for like 20 years. And Tommy just presented it to me. How awesome is that? That's awesome. This yeah. is great. My mom and dad are gonna be really excited. So anyway, uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's awesome to see you too. Thank you for coming back oh, every yeah, year and doing great. this. Um, maybe talk about the format a little bit. Every time I come to these, I think that taking the pressure off the speaker, the guy yeah. that's gonna be there and what you do is so important to yeah. tonight. So um, I, I think, first off, thank you for doing oh, it, but welcome. just kind of the, the, mm -hmm. the, what we're doing tonight. Yeah, that, that's a great question, Ryan, because there are some people, celebrities, that like to speak publicly and they love to go in front of a crowd and they have a speech, a wonderful speech, and they get the crowd engaged. But, and I like that. There's been plenty of speakers that I've encountered that do just that. But I love the format of me sitting up there and just shooting the breeze with two guys who went to JC and um, talking about their life, talking about their career influences in their life. And it, it kind of does take the pressure off because you might say, hey, Ryan Quigley is our guest here. Talk for 30 minutes. You might have a nice speech, but I think if you've got some interaction and kind of touching some buttons or pressing some buttons to where it might spark a good story, I think that's what makes it special. Right. We're, we're celebrating 100 years of Hilltopper football this Did you play uh, tonight. Football? I played football. I played quarterback. Yeah. Oh, were you really? Yeah. Your senior year? Uh, I'm a junior, sophomore, junior, senior oh, good year. For you. Yeah. I yeah. played my freshman year, then gave it up. Okay. I was sick and tired of getting knocked around all day. I was going to ask what your favorite football memory was uh, of, of 100 years of Hilltopper football. I would have to say, gosh, that's a, you know what? There were so many. My dad used to bring me to games when I was a kid. I'll tell you what it was. And I'm going to talk about it tonight. It was the game that was scoreless in the third quarter. Rockford Boylan, 0-0. They scored. Gordy went for fourth and two, failed. They scored 7-0. Joliet Catholic scored two-point conversion because no kicker. Dan Pezzaveno to Tim Mackey for the two-point conversion. They ended up winning 8-7. And then the state championship came. That's an awesome memory. That's great. That's a great memory. I'm getting chills just thinking yeah. about it. Uh, I, Gordy always used to tell me the story about Bill Gullickson when he yeah. told Gully that he couldn't play football anymore. Um, and stuck with basketball and stuck with baseball sure. and obviously Gully being the second pick of the draft and yeah. you being the 10th pick of the draft did that enter into your mind in high school with football and injuries you know what i wanted to experience the football life for one year as a hilltopper and it was great uh hey no problem just go ahead he brought the beef so that's good <laughs> yeah he brought the food so he gets a pass um i wanted to experience it just because growing up in grade school and seeing all the excitement at jolly memorial stadium so after my first year, and I'm kidding, I, you know, after like three or four weeks, I got to start. I was an outside linebacker, and I enjoyed it. But you know what? I was sick and tired of, back then, it was full contact, all practices. Not like today to where, you know, it's like half pads or whatever. So I was sick and tired of getting the you-know-what knocked out of me. And I, th you know, I thought to myself, I'm going to just concentrate on baseball. And then that's, that's what I did. For most of our Hilltopper fans that are here tonight, they know that Mark is the color commentator for the San Diego Padres. Some of you out there viewing might not know that, though. Um, what's the, the, the best moment that you've experienced over the last several years being uh, a color guy for the Padres? Well, a lot of moments for me come when they, they want, you know, the, the baseball years for San Diego have been very, very lean. But uh, there's been some division championships that are very, very exciting. Uh, you know, going back to 2010, uh, Jake Peavy was on the team there. Um, they're, they're looking to get into the playoffs. It's going to be tough. The Dodgers, you know, they're always getting better. They acquired Mookie Betts, so that just made the division that much tougher. 
But um, Manny Machado now a Padre, Eric Hosmer on the corners, two gold glovers on the corners. I think the one thing that is probably going to have to put him over the hump is uh, maybe a little bit more starting pitching. They've got some good young starting pitching in the mix, but uh, they need a little bit maybe a little bit more seasoning, a little bit more time at the big league level. So it, it all boils down, Ryan, you know it all boils down to the pitching. Right, right, yeah. um, Mark, thank you very much for being Thanks, with us Ryan. tonight. We greatly Thanks. appreciate it, and have a, have a good one tonight. Good to see you, Ryan. Yep, I thank you. It. Thank right. you. I'm here with Dan Sharp, Athletic Director at Joliet Catholic Academy and longtime Hall of Fame football coach and our newest uh, head football coach for the last three years, uh, Jake Jaworski, class of 2002. Uh, first, Coach Sharp, um, thank you for all you've done for us, uh, but we're celebrating 100 years of Joliet Catholic football. Uh, what's your favorite memory of 100 years uh, of Joliet Catholic football? Boy, it's hard to make one memory. I think it's just all the guys, you know, coaching all the kids that I had a chance to, uh, to have play for me. You know, Jake uh, taking over the program, doing a fantastic job. That's a highlight for me as well, and him winning the 14th state title recently. But it's just all about the presence. You, you, you feel it in the room today, you know, with Mike and Tom here and all the old former players. And to think 100 years and the success that we've had, you know, you think of Coach Gillespie and everything he did as he brought Julia Catholic into the modern era and all the guys that he's touched. And now many of those guys have gone on to coaching like Jake and myself and influencing and, and, and being an impact on young people's lives. I think it's the beauty of joy. It's the Hillman way. And that's, that's the excitement that I feel tonight, seeing all these guys. Uh, Jaws, um, both Mike Allstott and Tom Thayer both talked about uh, growing up Hilltopper fans and going to Memorial Stadium. Um, and I know that we did that. Can you maybe touch a little bit about, um, you know, growing up in Joliet and wanting to be a Hilltopper? Yeah. It, I think the thing, whole thing started for me is, uh, you know, my cousin's going to school here in the early 90s. Uh, my parents had never come to school. My parents didn't go to school here, but, you know, my, my aunt and uncle were the cheerleading coaches. So, like, I would beg my parents on Fridays to get on the cheerleading bus uh, with my aunt and uncle. And I just remember running around with my younger cousin, Nick, um, at Marion Catholic. I remember going on the road trips, Holy Cross and stuff like that. Um, being on the sidelines, my uncle also did the chains. Uh, I remember, I think it was 96 um, in their state run playing East St. Louis, you know, at the stadium, there's snowing and stuff like that. So just, um, you know, being on the sidelines, uh, running around and, uh, you know, looking at the kids, you know, like they were professional athletes, you know, and always, uh, you know, striving or wanting to be like those guys one day. Uh, next question for Coach here. Coach, how happy are you that Coach Jaws is still running the double wing? <laughs> Very happy. Matter of fact, I was talking to Jake the other day, and I said the greatest stat in the NFL this year was the San Francisco 49ers won the NFC Championship throwing the ball eight times. I know that's one you don't like to hear. No, but he's doing a great job. And he's, he's, it's, he's running his system. He's implementing his things, which he, he should do. It's his, his program. But I'm very proud of the way he's teaching the game to the kids. They play hard every play. Uh, Technique-wise, they're sound. His strategies are very good. And, of course, you know, I, I love the double wing, but I love to see all the things he's doing, both sides of the ball. It's just great to watch Hillman football and see that continue. Uh, Coach Jaws, um, give us a little preview of the 2020 Hilltoppers that are going to be coming out this fall. We're excited. We'll have a lot of guys back. We'll have about 15, 16 starters back um, as we start at nine, about nine juniors and, and five or six sophomores and some other sophomores got a lot of playing time. So we'll have a lot of experience back and uh, some high level skill guys. We've got to develop some guys on the line, but uh, you know we're excited. Uh, my last question for Coach. Um, as the leader of our athletic department, and you've seen girls volleyball with a third place finish this year, the dance team with a state championship last year, a third place finish this year, uh, cross country teams going to state, boys soccer winning sectionals, girls soccer going to state. Um, you know, we get that perception sometimes that Joya Catholic's a football school and we embrace all those championships. But talk about how proud maybe we all are of what all of our Angels and Hilltoppers are doing here at JCA. Well, I think success breeds success. I think it starts in the classroom. Uh, academically, uh, our excellence is second to none in the classroom, uh, the teachers and coaches we have. I think one of the things that was my goal when I came in here a long time ago was to create an atmosphere similar to what I had, which was the older coaches that were ready to move on really did a good job of developing and mentoring the young guys, the young coaches, the young ladies. And we really brought that kind of uh, thing here, you know, that we wanted to make sure Jake was ready to step in when he was. He was ready to go. 
Uh, I think you look at Jared Voss and what he's done in baseball. You look at Tom Kramer, who's an assistant for Chuck Bernard and what he's done in soccer, and Tina Kinsella stepping in for Dave in uh, softball. So the fact that we're developing the people and not going outside to hire them, but self-promoting them is keeping that Angel and Hillman tradition alive, and it shows in a success. It shows in the trophies that we've won, and that's because of the way they did it as athletes and students here. They're doing it the same way as coaches. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, enjoy the night. Thanks. Thanks, Quiggs. Ryan Quigley here, uh, celebrating 100 years of Joliet Catholic football once again. Uh, I'm here with one of our all-time greats, class of 2013, uh, career rushing record holder uh, here at Joliet Catholic Academy, uh, Ty Isaac. Uh, Ty, what are you most excited about tonight and seeing uh, Tom Thayer and Mike Allstott up on the stage? Um, just to hear what they have to say. Uh, those are guys that I know obviously were way before me, but those are legends. You know, you know those names coming up. And then um, I think just in general, seeing all the people here, I was talking to um, Malin. I was telling him how, you know, being around Joliet and being from here, seeing the people that are here, that was exciting. And, um, you know, just glad to have everybody in the same room. Uh, Ty, everybody's kind of talked about it tonight. Mike's talked about it, Mark Grant, Tom Thayer. I did a little bit too, uh, but I can remember being a senior in high school and playing quarterback here. and. I remember little Ty Isaac at our camps, and I remember Coach having to take this five, six-year-old kid and put him up with the 10-year-olds because he was so good. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that Hillman tradition uh, in town here? Um, I mean, for me, that, that's just how I grew up. You know, uh, Before I started going to public school, kids would ask me, you know, where are you going to school? And I'd just be like, JCA. They're like, no, elementary school. I was like, I don't know what elementary school, but I know I'm going to JCA. So that's just, you know, that's how I grew up. Obviously, my dad went here. Um, going to as many games as possible and uh, yeah I just for me that's just something I grew up with that's that's instilled in me. Uh, so Ty's dad Ty senior starting running back on the 1987 state championship team uh, can you talk a little bit about that kind of genealogy or that connection of you know two great running backs that we've had but just overall a greater family though too but uh, how it was to follow in your dad's footsteps. Um, it was it was fun I can remember for me the biggest thing was when it became you know instead of being you know Tyrone's son to now that's Ty's dad you know what I'm saying like that passing of the torch so that was fun um, so I never fully got him he won state I didn't so uh, I guess that would probably be my biggest thing I wanted to get that but um, did some did some all right stuff so it was fun uh, since we're celebrating 100 years of Hilltopper football tonight uh, what's your favorite memory in 100 years oh favorite memory Oh man, that's tough. I'm honestly, I gotta say, when Jr. had all them touchdowns, the yeah, the RB game, okay. yeah, that that had to be it. Cause I can remember hearing that on the radio and just back and forth, the whole game. Like, the you can tell some games are boring. The announcers are like having to make small talk. Whole game, they were going crazy, um, and we won. So that was probably my favorite. Um, we know storied career at USC and Michigan. Um, had a great college career. What are you up to these days? Um, still training. I was in the AAF, um, worked out with some XFL teams. I have some CFL stuff coming up. Um, so kind of trying to stay at that. And, uh, you know, if I keep working, hopefully something happens. But um, right now that's where my main focus is. Gotcha. Thanks for being with us, Ty. No Appreciate problem. it. Thank you.